Hey everybody, Marvin here from Blacktop Banter, actually at Blacktop Banter, and in my hands I hold a Dynapack roller, which you don't get to do very often. I've um, been fortunate enough to see some Dynapack rollers this year and spend some time with Dynapack. Now Dynapack is the official compaction sponsor of Blacktop Banter. Some things about Dynapack and their roller system is the seismic system, which improves compaction by making adjustments every 0.2 seconds. Rather than have a stable compaction style, it will actually analyze a pavement and adjust that compaction. They're, they're at the front of the line, always working on innovation and movement and everything that they can do to help improve the compaction world around asphalt. They have a huge presence online. You can find them, of course, at Dynapack.com or on social media at Dynapack underscore North underscore America or Dynapack North America, depending on where you're looking. Um, besides that, they're very, very active in our community as well. You can find them at many expos and shows and online and the team as well. They have a great team there that interacts really well with our community. So um, if you get a chance, pop over, check them out on social media, check out what Dynapack has to offer. And uh, as always... Dynapack is your partner on the road ahead. Hey y'all, Marvin here from Blacktop Banter. Uh, really quick, just wanted to talk about the 800 pavement network. As you can see, uh, we have some lettering there, uh, lettering on our other truck over there, lettering on this truck here. They all say 1-800-BLACKTOP. We've been using the 1-800-BLACKTOP number here for the last couple of years. It's really been exceptional for us as far as making things click with our branding. And now that we're in another state, those area codes are together. It's worked out fantastically for us. The other thing is that 800 Payment Network has other advantages. There's group discounts on a lot of the products and materials that we use within our industry. We're part of over 300 different see that one? over 300 different contractors that are now using these numbers um, all over the country that's combined over two billion dollars in gross profits so if you've been thinking about it or you're curious about it and you're like well no well, should i or shouldn't i dm me message me or reach out to 800 payment network you can find them online through their website you can call 1-800-PAVEMENT and you'll get them as well they'd be happy to run you through kind of the advantages and everything else that we've been taking advantage of here at Wiscoat and Dubuque Asphalt Maintenance and how it can benefit you as well once again if you're curious about it at all you can always dm me see that 1-800 black you can dm me or message me or email me through the podcast or Wiscoat or wherever as well I would love to talk to you about how it has helped us Hey everybody, welcome back. Blacktop Banter. This is episode 98 and we are closing in on episode 100. So it's been a three year run here. We're getting close to it as we've done uh, two seasons. This is the third season and we've already wrapped up one full year. I think we'll probably always stay on the third season um, being as there won't be any break. I don't think now from till the end of Blacktop Banter if that ever comes. But um, we do have somebody exciting coming for episode 100. So make sure you stay uh, in tune for that. I'm very excited. Um, once again, thanks to our sponsors. Uh, you heard them before the podcast and for the new sponsors that have joined us and are on the way. We really appreciate it. Big things on the way as well. We will see you in Con Expo in Las Vegas coming up here in March. We're very excited to be part of the team and the media team there that they have acquired to cover that conference and looking forward to seeing you all out there. So um, without further ado, um, yeah, everybody knows I kind of cut my teeth on uh, community and social media and whatnot in the green industry. And I'm bringing one of my friends from the green industry um, onto the podcast today because uh, I have been fortunate enough to watch his career and uh, be able to mimic some of his success uh, and parlay that into my success as well uh, from afar and from up close. Always been a great resource for me. And I'm hoping he becomes a great resource for you guys in this, this podcast episode. Brian Fullerton. Brian, you want to introduce yourself? Well, that's a, that's a good introduction, man. Like I owe you 20 bucks, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> so uh, just another dude out there, man, just cutting grass, uh, making tall grass short, but 
We love what we do. Uh, been in business for 17 seasons, believe it or not, man, up here in Novi, Michigan. Uh, so if you know Metro Detroit, we're about 35, 40 minutes west of uh, Detroit. And it's been a wild ride. Uh, first 10 years, not the most illustrious, to be honest with you. Um, kind of the chuck in the truck, like lowball dude. Uh, didn't really know how to run a real company. Really good at cutting grass. Uh, I, I would always say like we we're good at slinging mulch and mowing lawns. But last four or five years, definitely got our second wind. I owe that 100% to a couple of friends locally that I was able to befriend about four or five years ago. And then also from, um, honestly, the whole green industry community that you had um, uh, mentioned a second ago, being on social media, man, it's wild. Like you're quote unquote, trying to pour it out there for other people. But I was um, shocked to find how much those people helped me too, mm -hmm. which uh, and I say that is the most humble way I can. So, so many people helped me transform my business and we're not a finished product by any means, but the last five years, it's been some pretty good growth and uh, we're making money, man. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. And so, uh, dude, I've seen you every step of the way too, part of that green industry community, by the way. So <laughs> you've always been there and um, appreciate your love and support. And dude, whatever you guys got going on with the blacktop community and all the stuff that you guys are doing, holy cow, that's freaking awesome. Um, I need to dive more down this rabbit hole and see what you guys are putting together because it seems like things are blowing up, man, and people are really reciprocating with the uh, the content and the mission that you have right now. So that is so cool. Hey, man, I appreciate it. I appreciate it a lot. Yeah, it, it's been a wild ride, man. Uh, I always tell people about, um, you know, our, our our community or our bubble. I always say our bubble here in the asphalt world. Um, you know, there's people that once they got once what I did for the industry and in the industry of social media and community wise got normalized, there were people that gravitated towards that and then gravitated towards me. Like I, you want to be surrounded by like-minded people, right? To, so the people that are in that cylinder, I always say it's a cylinder because the only way to go is up. And the more people we keep packing in there, the higher we go. Um, it's cool to see the success of the people around you at the same time as you're succeeding, Right. Like we're, we're in a unique frame with that because most people, I believe, from the outside who aren't part of a community like the green industry community, you know, you and I have a lot of similar friends, uh, Paul and Caleb and Brittany and all these people that we've able to watch all their success. Blake, like everybody go up at the same time. It's fantastic. But what it does is keep you successfully humble because you're all succeeding at the same time. So the so and there's no like real admiration because somebody is so far in front of you that's not really what happens what happens is you all elevate at the same time and that's what we've been able to see in our industry but then also i've been able to see it with all my friends in the green industry too i just was fortunate enough to spend uh, a little time with uh nailer he came to our event at in charlotte and we had that same conversation i was like bro what are the chances like all of us that were like part of this would, would look like fools early on now all of a sudden are the most successful ones are, are there around there. It's just crazy to see and crazy to see. Like we had our first live event. I've always been a fan of your, your live events and stuff too. We have a really similar story in that um, 10 years. Like I just ran my business. Like I paid my bills. Like that was my goal. Then after a while I was like, dude, I want to be like a successful businessman too. I want to do something cool too with it. Or I'm going to feel like kind of like I wasted a lot of my time. Is that kind sure. of, it was like, dude, let's do something like, Let's see. Man. I always tell people like I wanted to see what I'm made of. Like yep. I, yep. I mean, honestly, I I feel like parallel paths. I I can't relate any more than what you just said. I mean, I uh, like you said earlier, like we were fools before. Now we're just like successful fools. You know, yeah. like yeah, <laughs> so, cool with that. Uh, <laughs> and successful is relative, right? Um, it is because, definitely. Yeah, I mean, a lot of our similar friends, mutual friends, they have seven figure businesses and they're shoring up their revenue, shoring up their profit and their overhead and becoming more efficient. Mm -hmm. And I have a smaller business. We do about 300 grand a year. And similarly though, we're becoming more efficient, more profitable, more productive. Um, so it doesn't matter if you're making 80 grand or 50 grand or 500 grand or 5 million, to be honest with you. Correct. Um, we're all on this journey, I think is like what you had said yep. together. And it is really... Um, not to be all kumbaya, but it is inspiring. I mean, it's a lifeline. And how how many of you guys listening in? I know I've said it, but how many of us listening in have said like entrepreneurship is lonely? And yeah. some people, the, the detractors will like criticize on maybe what you and I do. And I always say like, bro, you have said by your own mouth, we all have a hundred times before. Like, I wish there was somebody who got it like we did. Mm -hmm. Like I, it, it's lonely at the top or it's just lonely and entrepreneurship and now you have podcasts and live events and 
uh, coaching groups. masterminds. Yeah. Coaching groups. I mean, dude, pick your thing. And it doesn't mean you have to like even participate. You can consume, you don't yeah. have to contribute. And it's just wild that these resources are out there. I think the, the, the quick thing I'll say is like, I, I just remember back to Brian Zalman is 1.0 and man, the first 10 years were literally the good old throw mud up against the wall and sees what sticks. And you know, you don't have to have that first decade of trial and error. Right. Um, there's, there's still a window where you have to pay dues and get this thing to altitude. But if you can do that in 24 to 36 months, what took me 10, 12 years yep. for the love of God. And, and by the way, <laughs> I heard somebody say the definition of a great leader is the people that come on be behind them. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, uh, not that I'm anything special, there's no way, but it is crazy cool to see the second wave of like the social media crowd coming through and these, whether they're 15 and 16 doing $80,000, yep. whether they're 21, 22 doing 250 grand or these 30 year olds that are trying to get out of corporate America that are just stuck. I was just on a coaching call this morning with a guy who's making $87,000 a year. He's like, Hey bro, they're, they're golden handcuffs, but they're still handcuffs. Yeah. And he, he goes, I bought the whole ball of wax, which is like our all in bundle on our website. Um, I think right now it's priced at 1500 bucks. He goes, I spent a hundred thousand dollars for my bachelor's degree. He goes, I hate everything I do. I hate everything I learned. It was a good yeah. experience. It was a good school. He goes, he goes, why would I even, he goes, I didn't even question 1500 bucks all in to get totally up to speed. Right. With the whole ball of wax and all the courses, the contracts, the resources, yep. blah, blah, blah. And it's just, it's just wild, man. Like we did not have this stuff, you know, Marvin, 10, 10, 12 years ago for guys like me and you, it's wild. Yeah. It's nuts, man. And that's the same thing that, that we talk, you know, the one thing that, that I really enjoyed about the green industry is that it, to me on the outside, right. When I was starting to build community here with groups and whatnot and things as well is uh, that the, the fact that, the parallels between the communities and the people and the owner operators were really similar. So I knew that the chances are whatever the feelings were, whatever the troubles were, um, whatever the the highs were, were really similar or going to be similar once I started to build a community around Blacktop Banner and within the industry and whatnot too. And I still get the same conversation. We get guys like that say the same thing. I had a guy today. He's been in the union, been in the union for a long time. Um, just had to negotiate his wage or whatever and um, hates it doesn't want to be there right right like right. he's like I, I, I want to do um, line striping and asphalt maintenance because I want to be happy like I'm I, I make great money I don't want I don't need to make great money I just need to make enough money that I'm happy still right so that's one of our main coaching calls uh, one of my main questions when I do um, I, I try not to use the word coaching because we build a, a great community a group really. And um, the last question I ask to most of the time during an onboarding call is um, what is going to make you happy? Like, that's what I want to know. I want to know what is going to make you feel fulfilled. Um, if the answer is X amount of dollars, chances are we're going to miss the mark. So I really encourage people to ask that or to ask themselves that question. I don't necessarily need the answer. I just need them to ask themselves that question. Right. And, and that's okay. the key. like, you know, we're, yeah. we're, we're a half a million dollar company, uh, 450, 500 K at, at Wiscoat and the Buick asphalt maintenance. There's guys, there are some of my best friends that have sold their businesses for eight figures and then some, right. And then they're like, what do I do? Like now what right. do I do? And I'm like, right. Oh, okay. Here we go. We're going to get into this conversation. So yep. there's all different levels, right. Of how this goes. Well, and it, it is wild because like you, people want to chase success and they also want to ch chase significance. And I found that being a part of a community and running your business, you can do both. Yeah. And, and I think if you just chase one or the other, if you only, or, you know, row one or in the water, well, we all know what happens there. Yeah. And, um, man, there, there's so much good stuff that you just said that like, I, I'm trying to like give as much value <laughs> as I can and, you know, the window we have, but dude, it's the, the parallel paths are just uncanny, you know, like. Yeah. Um, we, we didn't have access to any of this stuff is what I have to just go back to, you know, yeah. and to see that these young kids and the next generation and everything that they're putting together, it's, it's special, man. And I, I'm an advocate for it. And I don't care if people think it's cheesy or kumbaya or whatever, like, dude, this stuff is working mm -hmm. because it's truth. We're talking about things that matter. Mm -hmm. We're, we're talking about things that people care about. Right. And, and, you know, the bad actors, like they get flushed out of the system anyway. 
So yeah. we're, we're not doing it for, for them. And frankly, okay. no offense, like we're not doing it to make money either. Like no. half of the stuff we all do is at a loss. You know? <laughs> so yeah. I was telling uh, somebody on a call today, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, let's see with what we pay for our, our monthly um, group uh, membership, uh, 10 people. I can make that in one morning uh, doing a seal code of a driveway. I'm like, most job, I always say, so yep. do you really think that I am doing this for the money? Because I'm totally not. Um, well, if, if, if all those YouTube millions would kick in, like they say, look, I'm not opposed to it, bro. Send the check. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, either they just have the wrong PO box or I got my money in the Cayman Islands. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Um, yeah. If it is, I would, I would afford a plane ticket to go. If it is there, Are I would you... at least like to see it. I'd like to be able to go <laughs> get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I, 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 it's been, it's been, uh, you know, a good grind, you know, four or five years. We're starting to make a little bit of money with social media, but dude, I'm still out there every day cutting grass and, and plowing mm -hmm. snow. Just a couple weeks ago, we had a seven and a half inch snowstorm and we were out till four in the morning. My truck broke down, had to get it towed. Um, thank God it was at the last, um, uh, commercial site for the day. We had one more that the guys went and tagged up a church. Um, but dude, we're, we're like, if I was making so much money, yeah, why would we be doing it? Well, you got to like do it to make videos. That's what, you know, the detractors will say. And I'm like, yeah. I love cutting grass. I love plowing snow. Like, and I build my social media stuff nights and weekends, um, just to help my friends and supplement some income. Like, and, and by the way, we, uh, one thing I would say, like my content, maybe you guys are new to me, but, um, here's my life philosophy in, in one sentence or less. Like Gary V says, you got to give 5149 right? For everything you, you give and take. And I've always operated being 90, 10 or yeah. like 95, five. So, uh, I mean, yeah, you pay for a coaching call, but dude, we've, we've got 900, I think maybe a thousand videos now on YouTube. Um, like you said, your episode at 98, almost at a hundred episodes. Congrats to that. That's huge. Yeah. Um, we're, we're just a little bit further down the road. Um, we have 450 episodes yeah. like, Dude, that like I pay twenty grand a year to host my podcast. Like it's not free, you know. Right. And with our with our production work, so this is a labor of love, you know. Yeah. And we would do it if we didn't get paid. You know why I know that? Because the first three or four years, bro, we, we didn't. Did we didn't get paid. <laughs> <laughs> we, did, we did. Like thank God we're starting to make a couple bucks now. Because like yeah. my wife's like, hey, how many more cameras and lenses do you need to buy? You know, like yeah. dude, this this microphone here is like. I don't know. The arm is 200 and the mic's 200 bucks. Like yeah. this stuff costs money, you know? So yeah, um, and, and pretty, people see us places, right. And they, it, somebody had to pay to go there. Right. And then you're going to bring yeah. another person with you. Of course, you're going to have to pay to go there. So yeah, it, it definitely yeah. does. Um, we always say like the opportunity cost of just slinging mulch though at, you know, 125 a yard installed. Hmm. Probably those, those lines would probably cross a lot quicker just doing landscaping. So, yes. um, but I digress, but no, dude, I'm, I'm glad to see the parallel paths. It's cool to see what you guys are putting together. Cool. Um, you were, you were bragging on everything before we hit record about what you guys are doing as a community. Yeah. And I just said, dude, that is so freaking cool. Keep it pure, keep it fun yes. and keep it, keep it growing, man. So kudos to all of you guys listening in. We try to, man, we try to. And, um, you know, one thing I want to kind of hint to, uh, on our end is, uh, you know, we have more people involved here at Blacktop Banter than just myself, finally. Um, you know, we have a videographer wise, um, somebody came on, uh, to help us with, uh, content creation and, um, uh, management, Chris, um, we have two more people here in the office to help us as well. But what's funny is somebody sent me a video cause we were, we did had a content meeting about the types of content that we want to start creating, uh, as well. And they sent me a video of you right on TikTok. It was the tires. It was a hey, well, I don't want to say the, the name wrong. Yeah. Well, who was yeah, it? Yeah, uh, uh, hand cooked. Yeah, it was hand, hand cooked tires. Cooked. I want to yeah, make yeah. this hand cooking, not or something like that. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, when they see it, they're like, dude, this is the, this is a cool video. Like, it's unique. Um, it feels personal. Like, the hand cook didn't send them the video and then they posted it. Like, this is what we want. We want you to be able to do this type of stuff with the brands that we're using. This is what we think will hit. I'm like, guess what? I know this guy. So, um, yeah. it, can you talk about that a little bit? I kind of want to get um, um, a little bit of that information from you. Oh, you're. you're your first let's talk about um your mantras your branding and social media mantras i'm going to ask you kind of about that a little bit so um cool. what are some things that you stand by or some tips um when it comes to social media and content creation um not so much for an entrepreneur we'll get to that but for your company your service business in general because that's where we both kind of cut our teeth making content to start out with was for yeah. our service businesses and once we started to do well at that that's when all of a sudden um, the community catches on, right? Because they're watching your business content first 
And then you and I seem to have a knack for connecting people um, and making things happen as far as bringing them together and bringing some value to them. But first of all, let me get back to the mantras and some tips for the listeners when it comes to social. That's a, man, that's a good question. I don't think I've ever been asked that one. So I don't have any canned responses. I would say like just good. simple stuff, just, just simple stuff, man. Like you got to be authentic. You have to keep it simple. Um, I, you know, the golden rule, like treat other people, how you want to be treated. Like we've always operated uh, I would say here's, I guess here's the line. Here's my, one of my go-tos, my elevator pitch is cutting grass. It, it's, it's a very uh, simple business that people complicate. It doesn't have to be complicated. Yep. And how many times have we all tried to hire a contractor and you can't get a phone call back or the work, or you don't know what's going on or just bad communication or bad quality of work. Like it, it doesn't have to be a complicated business being a contractor. Um, it can be chaos and it can be warfare getting the job done. I, I don't disagree with that. But the process for your customer doesn't have to be crazy. Mm -hmm. And so out of just a necessity or process of elimination, I don't really know what, we've just been able to distill and keep the industry very simple, our business very simple. The way we pay, uh, the way we charge cards on file, the way we collect, the, the way we do our routing, um, the way the equipment we use. It's mm -hmm. all very logical, methodical, no guesswork, not exciting, mm -hmm. but it's a stripped down version of how to run a successful company. I mean, candidly, we did 300 grand. We netted between profit and owner salary, $110,000. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to impress anybody. We did a 24.7% profit margin last year. And I worked maybe 40 hours a week in the summer and about 10 hours every two weeks in the winter. Yep. I don't know if that quality of life or lifestyle impresses you. But to me, like you said earlier, man, that's happiness. Like yeah, yeah. I was able to I, we had a new baby. I was able to spend a bunch of time with my social media friends, spend a lot of time with my wife. We did, I don't know, we weren't perfect, but maybe 20 out of 52 weeks, we did date nights. Yeah. Uh, probably, probably a little bit more, to be honest with you, probably 30-ish, maybe like just about yeah. half. No. Um, but dude, like, like that's a balanced life to me. And 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 I'm happy with that. Well, mm -hmm. it's an unbalanced life because we counterbalance, but that's a whole nother story. Um, but to me, like that, you said earlier, like nobody's measuring happiness. And to me personally, like, one of my go-to lines is uh, one thing that never shows up on a PNL statement is happiness. Yes. And bro, like my, my happiness in the last two years is through the roof. I'm happy. I'm not nervous to talk to you. I don't have anything to hide. I'm not here yep. to sell you guys anything. Like if you want to try to build a company, like how we've built one, I think we could help you get there. Mm -hmm. um, if we can't, if you want to build a million dollar company, I won't teach you how to do that, but I will point to some great friends. That's what I um, say. That's the exact yeah. thing I say. Yeah, I will, I will say like, if you learn anything from us, we won't mess you up getting to a million or 5 million. Mm -hmm. um, the foundation to start a hundred grand a year company will take you to a $5 million company. Yeah. Um, but man, I'll tell you what, like, it's just, it's just treating people right and being a giver. And I'm a very servant leadership kind of a guy. I'm a very big fan of John Maxwell and Zig Ziglar, like help other people get what they want. You automatically get what you want. Yep. Like, we sell a resource for 49 bucks for a long care contract. And then somebody secures a $12,000 apartment complex Mobid. Like, bro, you just got a, I don't know the number there, 500 X, 200 X, 10 X. Yeah. And that's the first year. And so we've always been like, here, here is one of my lines. Actually, I do have a line. It's we're here to help the Brian's law maintenance of 10 to 15 years ago. That didn't have a hope, a dream or a wish or a process. That's what I say, man, that that's yeah. it. in our group, literally when we onboard, I say, um, I went through 10 years of torture and I believe that my 10 years of torture um, happened so that I can divert you from having to do that, right? And, and we, we, we had yeah. a, I had an onboarding call the other day. I seen a guy's logo and I'm like, listen, I gotta be candid with you about this logo. And then we get in within an hour, he changed it. I just got a message this morning. He's like, dude, I got a lead generation just now off of my logo being changed. They, they commented cool. on my logo and said, if it's that clean, the work I do must be clean. I'm like, dude, that's, that's we, solid, bro. Like, let's go. Like, let's go. We're talking about getting leads off of logos. Oh, that'd be, yep. that'd be excited. So I, I just did a hour long podcast with a girl. Her name is Samantha. She was with a postcard company that we use. Um, we sell the template and they can help you with the printing. And it's a beautiful partnership. And I'm just like, bro, from bookkeepers to print companies to website companies that we can refer you to, like, why yeah. reinvent the wheel? Like, yeah. Um, there's still a finite amount of work you have to do. I don't want to paint entrepreneurship as easy. Cause like, right. dude, when it's 95 degrees out and it's 95% humidity, it it sucks. Okay. Oh. Like it's try, just fast. Try being on blacktop. Yeah, dude. I, I do not envy what you guys do. God bless all of you. Like 
I actually my my hole in the wall friend uh, mechanic shop. It's a family friend from my parents. Yep. Um, they're like the guy. He's like uh, his name is Bill. He's got like the sixty. He's like sixty seven years old. He's got the blue overall. You know, like um, Mad Doctor Wizard coat. Yeah. This guy's old school, bro. Um, but he's like uh, his his uh, office manager Barb. Her husband does asphalt, okay. and he goes. She goes. You guys don't know hot. She goes. Try being with a four hundred degree boiler twelve feet behind you. She goes, all the air conditioning in the world doesn't work for him when he's no. in that cab. And then and then she goes, he sleeps with an electric blanket on in the summer because he gets the chills from being so cold when it's 70 degrees in the home. Yep. And I said, oh, my God, like, actually, low-key, I sleep with an electric blanket in the summer. <laughs> but my wife thinks I'm crazy, but, like, I'm so messed up, like, physically from, like, the hot and cold extremes. And, yep. like, I, I'm a weirdo like that. But, dude, like, I could never – dude, God bless you guys with what you do. I could never – I see your crews out there at nights and weekends and roping off parking lots and dude, people are jerks to you guys, like rolling through Walmart parking lots and you're trying yep. to like pave shit, like, nope. you know, whatever. It's just, dude, it's God awesome, bless you guys. Dude. You're, you're a day. special breed. No, yeah. Yeah. We're, no, we're special. You got that right. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's, it, you get used to it. That's one of the things that build camaraderie though, right? I mean, yep. you get yep. certain, it's the same reason the green industry had camaraderie, I think, um, when I got, got involved in that community is the fact that we're all going through the same thing at the same time. We have the same pitfalls. We have the same highs and same lows. Our industry yep. is like that as well. Uh, it's been a little bit of a tougher nut to crack community-wise. Um, some of the stuff was the same, but it was a lot more of a harder shell to crack through. Um, you know, it, it, But we stayed persistent and did it. Uh, took a lot of arrows early on. Took a lot of ridicule. Still take a lot of ridicule. Um, but now at least we got something we can point to. We got some awards hanging up on the walls and uh, some best <laughs> the web awards and some pavement awards. But we got a lot of friends and a lot of venues and a lot of things too. And good numbers, right? Social media. Yep. Um, so it's good. I mean, it's it's good in that regard. But yeah, that's uh, it's still a tough enough to crack. Uh, we like I said, uh, we only got some people that are in our group, Black Top Banner Success Group. That's kind of a new thing, right, for people in our industry to to adapt to. Um, you know, it, it, our industry was one where you didn't ask for help and you didn't give help, and that's how it was. And right. um, you know, the only time you spent with people was at the expo, sharing some beers in Nashville, and that was that. And now, um, <laughs> we touch with people all year, right, doing what we do and building community with it. But we had our first um, event. I know um, I had kind of picked your brain about event building and that type of stuff um, going forward. It was very successful. Um, one of our mutual friends, Naylor, the lawn care rookie, um, who actually got me into a, the first mastermind group that probably changed my life, um, attended. And I was like, this is you, Naylor. Like this, you created this. I may have put all pieces together, but you were the spark that lit this. Um, but that was our first event. Uh, but I picked your brain about your event. And I, I, got, I get really excited when I see the promo pieces for it, you guys do a great job. And it makes me feel like I'm going to like um, uh, Entree Leadership Summit or uh, something like Mass Bro. I get super hyped and I see people hyped. I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going. Uh, shoot. Okay. You can. We'll sign you I, know, I know. I def oh, well, shoot, <laughs> definitely can. I've seen it. Click now to sign up. Um, right. <laughs> but tell me about it. Let's talk about that real quick because, um, like you said, uh, there's people that are in our group that have zero revenue that want to get to 100K. And there's um, people that I'm sure that are in the lawn care and green industry or outside of it that may be listening like, hey, yeah, I don't really want to do the blacktop stuff, but I do want to do the green industry stuff. Um, tell us about Launchpreneur, what it does, and then um, kind of what's available. And then you can talk about like its inception and stuff too, if you want to. Well, I, I mean, unsolicited, um, this wasn't a note. So hopefully appreciate you even let me share. Cause I, I'm not here to pitch anybody on any of it. No, no, no. Um, thanks. Thanks for even bringing it up. But yeah, I, I don't want to overplay it. I don't want to underplay it. It's, um, uh, it's just a wild inception story of we do YouTube videos and so many people were like, Hey, what about how to install mulch or how to bid a commercial site? And so you can imagine like after about three years, we had like five, 600 videos. Mm -hmm. And so people are trying to sift through this video bank and I'm like, okay, like time is money. And I don't mind paying for education. Like if I'm paying for education, it's probably saving me time. Like I pay 550 bucks an hour to talk to my, you know, corporate attorney, my litigation attorney. And you know, the dude's got a quarter million dollars in his education and 25 years of law. 
Mm -hmm. So what am I going to go do that or just pay 500 bucks an hour? I don't want to pay 500 bucks an hour, but it's worth it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, My CPA is 350 an hour. My trademark patent attorney, he's like 350 an hour, like um, blah, blah, blah. Right. So like time is money. So we built this training website, kept it nominal because I wanted to make it uh, affordable and accessible for the Brian's Law maintenance of 10, 15 years ago. And yeah, I mean, long story short, you guys, if you've been living anywhere on social media, there's people selling training courses and resources and contracts. Like, I guess we're that for the lung care side of things. Um, the reception has been wild. We've had 10,000 plus students um, per year. Like it's going okay. I'm very grateful. We take a lot of that money and reinvest into cameras, podcasts, plane tickets, travel. Then you- um, it is... It's for profit, but dude, I'll tell you last year, we, we spent $350,000 reinvesting into that company. Mm-hmm. So I bought, I buy, I'm buying cameras and light trusses for our live event. Um, okay. So it went from YouTube videos to being on Instagram to people wanted um, to go to a conference and have community equip expo, which is the big green industry expo for us. It's cool. It's huge. It's awesome, but it's all about mowers and, and shiny paint. Like Mm -hmm. it's getting a little bit more about education and getting a little bit more about community these last couple of years. But I just noticed people want to get together, like have a community event. And we brought in guest speakers. And uh, the first one, it was a bunch of six and seven figure income earners. And uh, second year, first year we had 150 people, second year, 250 people. And that was actually the COVID year. Uh, That was a ridiculous story. I could tell whole stories about that for that's when uh, I called you. I had time in COVID. I was like, dude, I'm doing this after COVID. Like people are going to be wanting to attend. Bro, big time. Dude, we went through hoops with the state, the, the health department, OSHA. Um, I was at one point going to rent the state fair tent and have 300 people because you couldn't have indoor events in Michigan because our governor is a Nazi. Um, <laughs> if you ever see Gret- Gretchen Whitmer, you can edit this out. But Gretchen Whitmer on the national level, vote no. She's a Nazi. She's a scumbag. And she is the, the, the destroyer of worlds. Okay. Um, can I say yeah, that? That's staying um, in. yeah, that's staying in, by the way. Yeah, you guys know where I vote. So anyway, um, couldn't do indoor events. So I was like, fine, give me the state fair tent. That was $15,000 at, at cost for me, out of pocket, like extra expense. Um, we were able to actually go indoors because we took this huge facility and div- divided it up into five individual 50-person events, telecasted it. Dude, it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Um, mm-hmm. Year three, like 200, I don't even know, 260, 265 people. Year year four, we had two, three. 330 people, year, year cool. uh, four, we just had it again, about 330 people I'm trying to get to four to 500 people. That'd be like the cool goal. Um, yeah. But dude, this last year we had, uh, these are people, big dogs in our industry. We had Mark Bradley. Yeah. Uh, he had a $50 million landscape company, LMN software, um, Troy Clog, two eight figure businesses, legacy guy, been in the industry 40 years. Um, Mike Andes, he's like a, a little rock star squirrely kid just squirrely guy putting out a bunch of helpful business content like uh, numbers type videos on youtube great guy um nick carl dude you name one you name them all but right dude we we, we figured it out somebody added it up on stage there's 150 million dollars worth of business owner on the on the stage mm. and dude your ticket price was 249 dollars yeah. like for an all-day conference and by the way the night before we rented out this whole go-kart track blah 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 okay like there wasn't any extra fee to go to the go-kart track. Like I took a six grand hit to entertain my friends. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. like, like people are like, Oh, you're making money on this thing. I go, well, I hope one day. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sometime soon. Yeah. So and that's I, fine. That's cool. I'm like, I operate with a 10 grand at blacktop banner. We operate with a 10 grand cushion <clears throat> just in case I run sure. a bar tab up somewhere. Like that's, <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty much it. Cause it's like uh, everything my, we do is going to get rolled into what we yeah. do. My, I have a similar 10 grand budget. Mine would just be at Buffalo Wild Wings, but that's another story. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, it depends on who I take, I guess. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I always tell people, like, I didn't make a bunch of money to, like, you know, eat a bunch of salads. You know what I'm saying? So that's right. uh, those we're, things are getting Whatever's on the buy one, get one card. You guys are, <laughs> whatever you want there, you're in. Hey, we went to Valentine's Day just the other day with the wifey. And uh, we're, we don't really do Valentine's Day, but this year we did. And uh, talking to a steakhouse and do the bills 400 bucks. Like, yeah. those were not conversations six years ago. No. Um, and, and and that's not because of social media. Like, I don't want people to think like, oh, you're he's like this is YouTuber, Instagram guy. Like, bro, our our revenue was up a hundred thousand dollars last year. Yeah. Like, we're and it wasn't because we had a ten percent price increase. Do the math. Right. Like, we're growing. We're taking ground. Like, and so I'm so passionate about the industry because I don't want people to think like we're just um, spin theory or we had this like you know uh, legacy that we're pulling uh, credibility from. Like we're still growing. Like yeah. I, like I said, t- three weeks ago, I was plowing snow at four in the morning, dude. 
Um, so, so Launchpreneur Academy is just training and education. It's not for everybody, but I think it is for everybody. It's a shoestring mm -hmm. budget, no franchise fee, um, blah, blah, blah. You guys can check it out. Launchpreneuracademy.com. Um, but really, really the, um, and by the way, I hope I answered your other question earlier about the mantras. Cause we kind of like you rabbit hold there. You did. Um, you my, did. Mine is you always gave just, me two bits. You gave me two bits for it. All right, cool. My, mine is always serve people, love people, help people give back. It's, it's not, it's not good. It? Repeat it one more time. Repeat that one more time. It was, uh, our, our mantra has always been serve people, love people, give people, help people grow. It's never been trying to get. And right. I've always heard Zig Ziglar say like, if you have help enough people get what they want, you automatically get what you want. Yeah. And, and frankly, like when I started social media, I, uh, believe it or not, like I did have enough foresight cause I had studied YouTube like crazy for a decade. I had been watching YouTube since like, Oh, four Oh five when it incepted, yep. like, Dancing Baby, Evolution of Dance, Charlie Bit My Finger, like uh, Philip DeFranco, like um, Jenna Marbles. Like, dude, I had been watching YouTube for 10, 11 years. I had never thought to post a video or build community or like, that was what weirdos did or people in California, like, yeah, which yeah. Is, is, you know, a lot of weirdos, but not you guys listening in, like the other people of California, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, that's funny right there. <laughs> you get a bunch of great sound bites out of this podcast. I, if I haven't offended you just yet, I'll get to you. Hold on. Yeah. Man. Um, <laughs> so... But I had said, if I ever do YouTube, which is a whole fluke story on how I even got started doing YouTube, I bought my wife a, uh, a camera for Christmas, drained the bank account, 900 bucks. She wanted to do like um, a makeup tutorial YouTube yeah. um, to because she wanted to get out of her job and be a stay-at-home wife and then mom. So we dropped this 900 bucks in this camera, sat under the Christmas tree for like three months. In March, I was trading in a piece of equipment. Nobody had a video on it. I did a video on it reluctantly. I wasn't even in the video, Marvin. Like... Again, that's for weirdos. I'm, I'm believe it or not, like not out front. I'm a closeted guy. Hey, I'm I'm, a, you, you and I are a lot of the same in that regard. Yeah, dude, you'd be surprised. The people doing podcasts are not always the extrovert. Like, no. I'm an introverted dude. I, I don't want to be on camera. Like, um, so I did that video. It got you know three views and one sub, and then we did another video. Got two views and we got one more sub, and a thousand videos later, there's a huge story there. But the long story short is like. We, we've just been able to create all this content to give these people these lifelines out there to to help them grow. And I've always been trying to be a giver, man. I, we, that's all I can say. I mean, it's, yeah. it's been fun helping employ my guys too. my cool, fun story last year, my boy, Rob, my right-hand guy bought a $18,000 Harley Davidson. Dang. Like that was his, his toy. Like he's been working hard and he's been owning up and manning up and running a bunch of the, the, you know, the foreman of the crew. And he's like, Hey, I'm thinking about buying something cool. Like, what do you think? I'm like, he's living at home. He's got no bills. I'm like, he's got a job in the bank. I said, go for it, dude. I said like, what's the payment? It's like, you know, two two seventy five a month. I'm like, dude, this is a no brainer. Go for it. And yeah. uh, anyway, he, he could pay cash, but I told him to keep his cash. He got like zero percent or three percent or something like ridiculous yeah but like bro like i went up there to see him buy his first motorcycle his harley davidson and i don't know anything about bikes but it's a cool looking bike mm -hmm. and he's 21 bro like seeing your guys win yeah. like dude come on man like have a soul that's the coolest thing ever like, that's like uh but you know our, my crew lead chris um uh, after the first year bought his house and then uh, our uh, my assistant Brooke uh, this year she got uh, a new uh, Ford car that she loved loved the interior and everything it was just like cool with uh, my uh, admin and my assistant um, my business assistant and associate uh, Steph she's like hey I'm getting a new car I'm getting a Toyota Rav I was like apparently I need to get something like at <laughs> here like uh, everybody else everybody's doing it yeah yeah They're like well, oh apparently. I I should be paying myself, I guess. Okay, so not not to brag, but like two years ago, we had our baby. We were drowning. We had no idea what we we're doing with kids. We, in love, honestly, you were drowning in love. Oh yeah, no, we were drowning <laughs> in no sleep love. Yeah, uh, a lot of arguments, exhaustion. You guys, if you've yeah. ever had new babies, like you guys you know get it. it yep. Um, that was a lifestyle shock for us. We needed help, and bro, like her, my wife's mom, my mother in law, uh, she was working at Joanne's Fabrics. Yep. Uh, making eleven dollars an hour. Yeah. And she, COVID hit. All the old people like uh don't didn't want to work there anymore because they were like cooped up and wanted to be at home because we didn't know what was going on, right? In yep. March, April, May. And uh, 
long story short, baby's like five, six months old. We needed some help. I found out that she went from like working the floor, which she loves to do, and sewing, and you know, she's an art artsy kind of a person, to they put her on the like, dude, 4 a.m. to 11 a.m., uh, unload the box truck in the she, winter. Bro, she's 65 with our arthritis. And I'm like, hey, we, we, we're we drowning. We we need we make enough money. Your mom's great at being a, a nurse and a, a grandma yeah, and, and yeah, great with kids yeah. and art. I said, like, what could she be making? Like, so we did the math. And, and long story short, we put her on a nominal salary. Nothing crazy, but more than what she was making at Joanne's times two. And I said, hey, you don't need this. You're retired. You need some extra income anyway. Would you just like to be a part-time grandma? And, you know, like, dude, I'm not a hero. I'm not a hot shot. But, like, dude, for two years, she's she's been able to wake up whenever she wants. I literally caught up with her one day. This is a couple months ago. I said, hey, um, would you mind coming over and watching the baby next week? She goes, what time? I said, oh, like 10 or 11. She goes, perfect. She goes, um, she goes, yeah, I, I, I sleep until about 8, 830 now. So anytime after about 10 is fine with me. <laughs> Bro, she's 65 and she hasn't been able to sleep in till 8, 8 30 in the morning for 30, 40 years. Yeah. She was a teacher. She was a 5 a.m. shift. And now she got put on the truck to unload boxes in a in Michigan in the winter when it's 10 degrees outside. I don't think so. Yeah. And and so people are like, you know, you're gonna take your extra money and buy a Lambo or buy a an Audi R8. Like I would hope to one day maybe get there, like all of you. Yeah. But in the meantime, we were able to retire my mother-in-law yeah. like, and it's not, you don't have to be a millionaire, but if you have an extra thousand dollars a month coming in from your company or whatever company, like that can change people's lives. By the way, uh, 12 months later, we did the same thing with my mom. They're both oh. on the payroll. They both do office administrative work. Yeah. And, but you know what, but, but they really do. They, they help a lot with the companies and babysitting. And when we go on conferences and events, like they're, they're part of the team. Like, I did a talk two years ago at Launch Premier Academy Live. I said, who wins when you succeed? And like, like if I have a successful company, fantastic, good for me. I'm successful. But who really won out of that equation? Mm -hmm. All the people listening to the content, my mom and my mother-in-law that I get to be on payroll and not have to worry about chasing a stupid dollar bill at 65 years old. My yeah. mom's 72, bro. Right. Like, when you when 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 blacktop banter succeeds and you're able to employ people that go buy new jobs, like yeah, Marvin won, but who really wins when you succeed? That's right. Yeah. And and I'm just telling you guys, I'm I'm gonna charge you guys. Like you have to win. There's people counting on you, and there's people gonna be counting on you that don't even know they're counting, going to be counting on you. If that makes sense. It is. It's and true. So let's not. I don't want to be rude, but like let's not pussyfoot this thing. Let's not treat it lightly. Let's not take anything for granted you know one of my lines is some people treat a crumb like a feast some people treat a feast like a crumb and let's never be the people that treat a feast like a crumb yeah right because i would have treated a crumb like a feast the first 10 11 years i was in, in business yeah and now respectfully everybody's got all this information and they're like now people just complain that everybody's giving out information yeah it's like dude what what the hell which way do you want it like thank god it exists. So whether it's hubris and humility, whether it's gratefulness and Thanksgiving, whether it's just appreciation, like, dude, so into Marvin, so into the team, so into the community, so into the group. Yep. You know, if, if your life has been better, like, dude, tag your it. You have to pay it forward to the next guy, man. That's how all this grows. Dude, we we did the podcast live in Charlotte at National Paven Expo a few weeks ago. And on stage with me was Jacob Buck from Buck Brothers Asphalt and Concrete. And he's 19 years old. When I was making my first YouTube videos, he was nine years old, right? Wow. Now, yeah, right. Now he's the VP of that company and makes so much fire content that I'm uber jealous, right? And the, we had another kid on stage with us, a younger guy, his name's uh, Josh. They own a company called PayPro and they make killer content and stuff too for that company. And I looked over at those two and Josh and now we were talking about Jacob's content when he was coming up and Josh was like, bro, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have made this content. Like, right. We would have been the first ones making the content. So for me, it was like you were saying, there's people that are going to benefit from what we do, creating content, putting yourself out there, being part of the community, making something happen that don't even know that they're going to be benefiting from that yet. 
right until it's down the line so it's very cool to see and very cool for us to get back together uh on this and hopefully we get to collaborate in the future on different stuff here going forward it'd be cool to bring some of this stuff totally. together uh one way or another from one side well, or another, whether it's the event or whatever we need we, number one we got to get you on the fully ton of filtered podcast um yeah because what you guys are doing changing the game for the asphalt guys is just fantastic Dude, and then awesome. No, number two, we got to get to the Launch Printer Academy live, man. You can see our uh, our Forrest Gump version of the conference. So come check it out. <laughs> dude, I'd, be, dude, I'd be I'd be absolutely excited to um to, yeah, to yeah. And, and check it out and be there um and see all my friends and whatnot again. And so we be we'd be happy to. Before yeah. we go, I want to do two things. I want you to shout out your socials and then um where people can find you. And then we're yeah. gonna do pod deck. Do you know what pod deck is? You're gonna find is that it. the cards that Nao had. Is that the cards? Maybe, could be. I don't okay. know. Like a random, random question thing. You know? Yes, yeah, so it's gonna be a random question for sure. But this, for this, whole, this, this whole, this whole podcast has been random, so that fits right in. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I think we kept it to some kind of pattern. Maybe not though. But that's because you're a structured or uh, organized individual. Oh you know, yeah, here, that's what it is. I'm sure. <laughs> it is. I'm sure it is. <laughs> we fly by the seat of our pants over here, bro. Um, yeah. Uh, the first Socials. question, uh, social. Uh, just yeah, really simply, Brian's all maintenance on YouTube, Instagram. Um. Uh, Fullerton Unfiltered Podcast is a podcast we drop Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, LaunchpreneurAcademy.com for our training. And that's kind of it, man. If you guys need to email me, Brian's all maintenance 2007 at gmail.com. I'm always here for you guys. I, I I call myself like 1-800-HELP, you know, for like lawn care. Like, dude, say, hey, if you have a question, a comment, a concern, or a topic, or anything I can do to help you guys out, I'm always here for you guys. I know it sounds weird. Like, there's no alternative motive, man. There's no alternative agenda. Like, I've been beyond blessed. I'm, I dude, I'm, I've been in the bonus round ever since I met my girl. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So like through the last 10 years, the, the, my company getting better, my social media growing, my wife is smoking hot, popping out two babies. Okay. Like, and hopefully many more I'm in the bonus round, dude. I'm the most grateful, thankful guy you've ever met. So if, if you guys have a question, my mission is to help you guys out best I can. You still got to do the work, but I will, I will help you any which way I can to, to grow because I want to yeah. see you guys win, win big. So Isn't that, um, well, it, it, why, why though? Why do you want to see him win big? Because I want to see if your answer is the same as mine. People ask me that all the time, why we do what we do, right? And I do it for one thing for myself, because I want to see if I am going to be the best version of myself and unlock all my potential before the, t the grains of sand run out of my hourglass. But why well, do we, you, why do you want to see people succeed that are in your atmosphere? Do you, you want the, you want the topical answer? Or you want the real answer? Like I want the real topical <laughs> answer. All right. Topical answer is like, well, that's what you're supposed to do, right? Like you're yeah. supposed to help people and okay. it just feels, it just feels good. All right. right? Now the, other one. the the real answer is I, there's an old uh, uh, audio. I heard somebody say like, when you see two turtles sitting on a fence post, they didn't put themselves there. Yeah. So my point is I have come to believe for me personally that this isn't, I don't want to get too deep, but like, bro, I didn't come up with any of this stuff. Like I'm a steward of it mm -hmm. and to who much is given much is required mm -hmm. and expected. Mm -hmm. And if I start thinking for a second, that like, I put all this together on my own time or will, and I'm not just a steward of it. And a steward takes care of something and passes it on to the next person. Like then what was given to you can be just as quickly taken away from you. Great answer. And so, so now you go from a, Hey, this is, feels good. And I kind of like doing it and I'll do it when I can to, Hey, if you're like charged to do something and you don't do it, like two things, one, you're going to get demoted and somebody else is going to get that prize. Yeah. So don't ever think for a second that like, I don't care if you want a seven figure company, you're like, dude, I deserve everything. Kinda. But remember, man, turtle sitting on a fence post, they didn't put themselves up there. Yeah. So yes, you have to work hard. Yes. There's a faith without works is dead. But don't ever forget the faith element. Don't ever forget that you're not usually at where you're at just because of yourself. Yeah. Right? And so you can take that as many layers deep in the onion as you want. But um, I, this is, like, this is like a healthy fear, but my healthy fear is I don't want to mess it up. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Yep. That nailed it. Cool. It's pretty close to the same. I'll wait for you to ask me that question on Fullerton Unfiltered. Yeah, dude, I'm down. I like it. Okay. All right. I'm going to cut the deck and we're going to see what it is. Okay. Well, you're not going to shuffle in front of me. Like, is that the dealer rule? No, I'm scared. I'm I already scared. did. I already <laughs> shuffled it under the table. Oh yeah. There you go. <laughs> this is probably, this is probably okay. One, I guess. Um, if you had to delete all but three apps from your smartphone, which ones would you keep? 
if I had to delete all the free apps on my phone, yeah, which one would delete? Well, free. I mean, I guess I eat, breathe, and sleep uh, Instagram. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to retract that already. I'm going to keep my email, my Gmail email. I'm going to keep my text messages, yeah. really, so I can text my text my wife. And then... Um, you better pick one see. business. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, dude. Now you're, getting, now you're getting me, bro. I don't know. Um, no, nah, I could care less about business. Like, that comes and goes, you know? I would... I I would well honestly answer I'd probably be murdered if I didn't have uh uh Google what is it called Google Maps you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a geographical idiot bro like I need I I suck that MapQuest I used to work at True Green and they gave you MapQuest route sheets back in 05. yeah it was the worst job I could have ever had it was the most <laughs> it was the worst job on all planet Earth I had route sheets turn there wasn't no turn left turn left Whoa. so. Now I'm actually really good with directions because like I overcame that fear, you know, but um, I would say, I would say like, honestly, probably podcast app, you know, like I, okay. I feel like if I can keep in touch with my people, keep in touch with business on email and then uh, keep mindset. growing mindset, I think, I think I'd be just fine with those three apps. But um, honestly, that's probably a good thing. I should probably delete the rest of them anyway, because they're all garbage. So yeah, whatever. It, it stinks. <laughs> it really does. I yeah. think good I, question. I, yeah, yeah, I'll I'll share back real quick, and then we'll we'll sign off. Uh, I think cool. I would keep um iTunes so I could have music, dude. I gotta have music no matter what, whatever I do. Uh, yeah. uh, my email for sure, like the the email app for sure. And then honestly, truthfully, I think it would probably this is the worst answer ever because I hate this app more than anything. But it would probably be Facebook. And that's, oh no, Facebook! I know, I know, I know, I know. and it's it's. You <laughs> it just heard the sea of humanity go. Oh, I know, I know, <laughs> but I'm, but I know that I can generate what I need to generate from Facebook in order to generate whatever life I want to live, like monetary, monetarily, right? I, so, I, 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 let's do. Let's change that really quick. If you could delete any one app on your spouse's phone, okay. which one would that be? <laughs> it would be. Probably it would probably be um, Apple Podcasts. Yeah, because, uh, you would, because you would delete that off your spouse's phone. Yeah, yeah, because um, she doesn't listen to my podcast, uh, <laughs> and all I ever hear about this great vast knowledge that she acquires is from Joe Rogan's podcast. <laughs> so I'm like, cool. Like every time, like we'll, you know, we'll get lead into a conversation, and she'll hit me with a great piece of education, right? And before I, I used to be like, where did you hear that? Now, after a while, I'll, I, now all I ask is who was on Joe Rogan, right? When she, when she comes up with a great piece of information, I'm like, so who's on Joe Rogan? She's like, you know, Jordan Peterson or Dude, uh, Wiz, Khalifa. Wiz yeah. Khalifa. I'm like, oh, well, thank you for the sage knowledge from Wiz Khalifa. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what I've been doing my whole life. Sorry. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. To, uh, Mark, I've been listening to Marcus Aurelius's oh. audiobook. So sorry I did that. I'll, I'll be sure to tune into Wiz Khalifa. I mean, shout out to the wife, man. Sounds like she's figuring it out, bro. You got it, <laughs> so, bro. She's cultured, bro. She's cultured. I can tell you that. That's that's a good team player right there, man. That's a good yes, support, uh, support player. Um, my my cheeks literally hurt so much from laughing from this podcast. Bro. I can't <laughs> even like the muscles up here. I'm like, dude, my cheeks hurt, man. That's like hilarious. Um. Yeah. I, my, my simple answer, knowing that she's in the other room and the door it's shut, is the like, Amazon app. Oh, you know, yeah, like, for sure, dude. Now you – dude, that Lambo is so much closer. I would be a millionaire, bro, like oh, literally. Yeah. We, we, bro, we, we did uh, 900 Amazon orders last year, um, 500 oh. the year before that, and 400 oh orders the year before that. Like, I, 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 dude, there's 100 grand on Amazon. Like, I, I'm like, what? She goes, well, I'm nesting. I'm buying stuff for the baby. And I'm like – it's dude, it's it's insane. So I literally joked, uh, we're building a home here. I said I want to build a uh, trash compactor inside, like a for bundler. Cardboard. Yeah, for real. Like I I need to start like a compost business, bro, to cardboard. get my money back. So yeah. she'll never listen to this podcast anyway either. So don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Mine won't either. So we're fine. She doesn't listen to my show. Yeah, she doesn't listen to my show. So. Yeah, it's cool. cool. I, I think that's a typical thing with all spouses that their 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 spouse guy or girl don't listen to their yeah. husbands or wives so oh, I, i'm pretty sure I, i'm pretty sure it happened before podcasting that has just always been how it is like, oh you know you know so and so no i don't know right no. or be like introducing you and i'm like wow that was cool and she'll be like who was that like dude you listen to that show that was fire i was spitting spitting fire she's like yeah no i was just be dealing with baby throw up all day you're like oh yeah okay i get it but yeah but well, you know they, they, they have time to listen to their um 
murder mysteries. I'm over here like looking like like my wife's that way. Like mm-hmm. hopefully I'm gonna get swung at you know with a two by four. <laughs> yeah, and then so, but they got time, the time for the murder mysteries, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's what. And why do you think they listen to those? That's what I always ask. I'm like, how come you're listening to the know. best ways to hide bodies and not get caught? Like, okay, dude, no, no comment, bro. Like they're they're not stupid, man. Like they, you know, you and I could figure out a good way to dispose of a body with our backgrounds. They've been listening to a song that says "Rise Up." I'm like, oh, oh, this is not going good. Here we go. It's gonna happen. Well, hopefully, Dude, you need to be on the witness protection program, bro. Like your 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 wife's like, I know. Like you you sound like you shouldn't mess up, bro. I know. I know that everyone's like, why are you working so long? I'm like, I'm favoring the odds in my favor. Like like I'm trying to make sure that my time allotment is minimal. If it, I could if die. You guys, if you guys listen to the podcast, you can't see the video replay, but uh, Marvin over here is blinking and uh, he's like, you guys help me, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, if, if, if things, he, are, things, things, twice, things are great. You know what it is. Yeah, things are good. Things are good. Yeah, cool. Well, uh, hopefully we get to uh, do this again soon, man. It's been a blast and it's good to catch up. Been way too long. I didn't get to GIE this year, which is now equip, but um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, well, if if I can't make it there, I've been thriving a lot better in, in different venues and different things anyway. So uh, I'm hoping that we can connect more on a personal level and I get over to the entrepreneur and uh, we'll connect Absolutely, you to the podcast for sure. Brian, yep. thank you so much for joining us, my friend. Most of the time here on Blacktop Banner, we speak asphalt. But today we spoke about a lot of stuff, right? Green and whatnot. Yep. So yep. it, it was great to have you. Um, if anybody um, has any questions about this podcast or anything, about um, Brian's Entrepreneur Academy, his business or anything like that. Um, replay it a little bit where he did give you the links to his socials and how to get in touch with him. Otherwise, we'll catch you on the flip side, my friend. Thanks, brother. Appreciate the time. You guys take care. All right, no worries. We'll talk soon. For myself and Brian, this is Blacktop Banner, episode 98, where we speak asphalt. Peace. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. That was good.